I'm sure by now most of you know about what happened last night in Portland. A Trump supporter walking down the street tragically had his life taken from him. And only a couple days ago, Donald Trump offered federal assistance to this city. And the mayor, Ted Wheeler, rather disrespectfully said no. He didn't just say no, he sent a disrespectful letter to the president. And now we have one of the worst nights in the ongoing unrest, and it could have been avoided. I'm sure most of you know about what happened in Kenosha, Wisconsin already. Well, regular people are taking notice, and this is backfiring to an extreme degree on these Democrats. They could have just said yes, but because everything that Trump does is wrong, they said no every step of the way. I remember when Lori Lightfoot said, I don't need leadership lessons from Donald Trump and rejected federal assistance. And then only about a week or two later, the city was ransacked. Well, here's the breaking news. U.S. election 2020. Trump handed huge boost as Biden makes major mistake. Exclusive poll. Donald Trump is on course for a clear victory in the U.S. presidential election after he opened up a three point lead over Joe Biden in an exclusive poll for the Sunday Express. And you know why? Because people in this country have had enough of months of extremism. But the Democrats have done nothing. In fact, early on, they were fanning the flames of this from Ocasio-Cortez saying, stay in the streets, it's working, to Kamala Harris saying they should not let up. Well, they didn't. And many people have now lost their lives. Many businesses have been destroyed. Many people have cried watching their loved ones be taken from them. In Seattle, for instance, we still don't have justice or closure on the people who had their lives taken from them during the whole Chaz incident. Now, Donald Trump could have invoked the Insurrection Act a long time ago, but the Constitution, well, the Constitution says the federal government isn't supposed to intervene in local affairs. So he could have invoked the Insurrection Act and just trampled all over that, but he's respected the state's right to deal with these problems on their own. The only problem is they haven't. So we have more breaking news. In Kenosha, a, or I'm sorry, in Wisconsin, someone is putting together a recall effort of the governor specifically saying they don't feel safe and their cities are burning. And mind you, the governor there did accept Trump's offer for federal assistance recently. One of the first, I believe the first to actually do it. But the people there don't care. They're fed up. And now we're seeing not just this one poll showing Trump ahead, but in the aggregate, Joe Biden is doing substantially worse than Hillary Clinton did at the exact same time, suggesting we may see Donald Trump take a landslide. And that's assuming that come election time, everything goes as planned. But of course, the Democrats are still pushing mail-in voting. And we have a big breaking story from the New York Post. Apparently, an operative who engages in voter fraud has confessed to the Post under the, under the condition of anonymity explaining what they do and why they do it. But out of fear of prosecution, they wouldn't give up their name. However, it appears the New York Post has confirmed this. Voter fraud is very, very real. And of course, the media keeps saying that Donald Trump has no evidence for any of his claims about inaccuracies or fraud, even though we see it over and over again. For instance, the first universal mail-in vote in New Jersey in Patterson was nullified and a new vote was ordered. And in 2012, the New York Times reported with more mail-in ballots, you get more inaccuracy and more fraud. But for some reason, the Democrats and their allies and media keep saying it's fake news. That's my biggest fear. So let's let's start from the beginning here. We got a major poll. Donald Trump is probably going to win. Democrats are playing dirty games. Let's read the news before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give. There's a P.O. box if you'd like to send me stuff. But the best thing you can do is share this video. I don't have a big marketing department like CNN or MSNBC or even Fox News. I just have you. If you think I do a good job and what I'm saying is important and people should hear it, please consider sharing this video wherever you can. And if you really want to support me, just hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell. Let's read the news. From, the, from express.co.uk, they say, According to the latest monthly Democracy Institute Sunday Express poll, President Trump has 48% of the, of, pop, of the popular support over Vice President Biden's 45%. In the key swing states, the gap is even bigger, with 49% for Trump to 42% for Biden, giving the incumbent U.S. president an almost unassailable seven-point lead. This is one of the first polls to show Donald Trump with a, with a massive lead above Joe Biden. It was only a few weeks ago they showed that Joe Biden had a double-digit lead. Now it's flipped for Trump. And the important thing here is, 
It's one poll. And I think the polls are all broken. But I've got some more data to show you to back up why I believe this is, it's actually likely accurate. I'm, I would not be surprised if at this point, everything we've seen would lead to a Donald Trump landslide victory. But hey, don't get complacent. I will be making sure to go out and vote in person and you better do the same. They say, since the Democracy, uh, since the Democracy Institute poll in August, a crucial month which saw the Democrat and Republican conventions, the president has gained a point in the swing states while his opponent has lost a point. Significantly, the latest poll shows that 21% were positively influenced to vote for Trump after the RNC, but a negligible 8% were inspired to vote for Biden after the DNC. Trump is set to win Minnesota 48 to 45, Florida 47 to 44, and New Hampshire, where he just held a major rally 47 to 43. New Hampshire, that's the East Coast, man, that's crazy. Red state. It also appears clear that U.S. voters have already made up their minds with a mere 3% of Trump voters and 9% of Biden supporters suggesting they could have a change of heart on polling day on November 3rd. Think about that. Trump voters know they are voting Trump. Biden voters, 9%, not too sure. They might flip. Patrick Bisham, the director of the Democracy Institute, said that the poll confirms that the Democrats completely misread the effect of the Black Lives Matter protests and the desire of Americans to restore law and order in the wake of riots and anarchic protest. He said, in any political campaign, there's a moment that tells you which way the electoral wind is blowing. In this year's American presidential campaign, the moment arrived on Wednesday. Joe Biden restated his support for the peaceful protests, but crucially condemned the violence that has come to dominate the months long nationwide protest movement. And every single quote from every single Democrat will exist forever to haunt them. These riots and and the violence that came along with them didn't come from a vacuum. It didn't come out of nowhere. It only emerged because they had mainstream support from the establishment media and their politician and the political allies like the Democrats. If we had all just come out, and I mean the Democrats, and said, no, then the violence would have stopped. The police could have done their job. But even Joe Biden stepped in it when asked by an activist, would he support diverting funds from police? He said, yes, that was the core message of defund the police. He later had to walk it back and say, no, no, I want more funding for police. They realized too little too late that the protests which led to vi- which, which led to riots and violence were not popular. Some people didn't mind the peaceful protests and they had a shield in the media. The media has repeatedly said peaceful every step of the way. And Americans have had enough. They've seen it and they've snapped. They go on to say, quote, When a candidate changes his tune three quarters of the way through the race, it is not because he knows he holds a winning hand. He does so because the electoral ground is shifting beneath his feet. Take that to heart. Joe Biden changed his message several times because he realized they bet on the wrong horse. Too late. Donald Trump's been there the whole time consistently saying enough. The Biden campaign made this move for one simple reason. Its own internal polling numbers revealed what Democracy Institute Sunday Express polls have shown for the past three months. The overwhelming majority of Americans, including black voters, are opposed to the organized anarchy. It's a really funny way of phrasing it, mind you. Looting, vandalism, mayhem, and murdering of innocent people, explicitly and implicitly cheered on by a considerable cabal of Democratic politicians while an even large number simply turn a blind eye. What if I were to tell you that after all of this, a Democrat politician came out and said, yeah, well, you know, this just happens after a man has life taken from him. You'd probably say, no way, Tim, they couldn't be that callous. They couldn't be that blind. From the Hill, just this morning, Demings, Portland shooting is what happens when homeland security is politicized. That's right. It's not the fault of the rioters or the far left, the extremists. It's the fault of Trump and the, and the Department of Homeland Security. They say Rep. Val Demings on Sunday called the shooting death during violent clashes between pro-Trump and leftist demonstrators in Portland. What happens as a result of Homeland Security being politicized? This is exactly what happens when Homeland Security, the intelligence community, the military who are charged with protecting our homeland are politicized. Demings also called on President Trump to directly address protesters in Portland to alleviate tensions. Wouldn't it be nice for the president of the United States to take the microphone or the airwaves and send a message for peace and calm? This now more than ever is a time when we need to hear from the president of the U.S. 
But the chaos and disorder and lawlessness we are currently seeing, that's Donald Trump's America. A Trump supporter walking down the street, shot twice in the chest. That's Donald Trump's America. Donald Trump, who offered federal assistance just two days ago. Two days ago, I believe it was Ted Wheeler saying, we don't want it. That's Donald Trump's America. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it's the Democrats and the cities and states that are making it that way. Trump is the president. Sure, he could have invoked the, the, the Insurrection Act. But you know what? He was letting Democrats run their own, their own jurisdictions, and he wasn't going to intervene and invoke this law to, to supersede the Constitution. I'm not going to blame him for what these Democrats are doing. He was there, ready, willing, and able, and still is. And they still reject him. Only Governor Evers, I believe, actually took him up on the offer. Well, I want to show you something. This is just one poll. But take a look at this. Benny Johnson tweeted, um, guys, it's going to be a landslide. Take a look at the real clear politics electoral spread average. Four years ago, Clinton had nine in Wisconsin. Biden has 3.5. We can see this trend across the board. Clinton had an 8.6% polling lead. Biden, 2.6. Ohio, Clinton had 3.2 to Biden's 2.3. Pennsylvania, Clinton had 7.6 to Biden's 4.7. You get the point. Joe Biden in the aggregate polls is doing worse than Hillary Clinton in most battleground states. In fact, in some where Clinton was ahead last time, Trump is now ahead, notably in Iowa, in North Carolina. In some places like Arizona, it looks like Biden is ahead of Trump. It's not perfect, but it does show clearly favorable data for Donald Trump. Now, you may be saying, but Tim, come on, surely they fixed their polls and we can see that Biden is still ahead. A new study suggests polls are missing shy Trump voters from Bloomberg. They say a new online study finds that Republicans and independents are twice as likely as Democrats to say they would not give their true opinion in a telephone poll question about their preference for president in the 2020 election. That raises the possibility that polls understate support for President Donald Trump. And this we have known. The backlash goes beyond just the polls. In Wisconsin, an effort has been launched to recall Tony Effort, uh, Tony Evers. A Burlington woman launched the effort Friday to recall the governor and also the lieutenant governor saying the citizens of Wisconsin right now feel extremely unsafe. We are not willing to stand by and watch our cities burn. It's Donald Trump who has routinely called them out. It's Donald Trump who just this morning called the Portland mayor a fool saying you need to bring in the National Guard. He's right. I'm agreeing with Donald Trump and the mayor needs to be the one to say yes. The mayor has failed his own city. They occupied his own condo lobby and the cops didn't respond initially, I believe. I'm not sure if they ever actually came. His neighbors were upset, apparently, according to some reports, throwing things out the window at the extremists. They're taking over city streets and Trump has been saying, I will shut it down. You just give me the word. You know what this shows? The fact that Trump won't force his way in, I believe, is good leadership. The fact that Donald Trump is allowing these cities to govern themselves the way they're legally supposed to shows good leadership. Trump is not deciding to slam down an iron fist and come in and take control. Some would suggest he should, but I don't think we should. We should. I don't, I don't think so. I believe the Insurrection Act should be a last ditch effort, a, a last resort when the streets are nothing but mayhem and nothing can function. Right now, yes, we have violence. We have an escalation in the rioting. But it is still up to the local authorities to deal with it. And if the people won't rise up themselves, well, maybe that's, that's, that's the point at which Trump has to come in. But for the time being, the people who live in these cities have to stand up and order a recall and challenge their Democratic leaders. Otherwise, I don't believe it's Trump's place. If you get a substantial amount of people in these jurisdictions saying, please, Trump, come, like they're starting to say in some of these areas, then I believe Trump should come in. And, and shut down these ineffective politicians who are causing all of these problems. But I want to show you some of the uh, aftermath. And I want to show you why people are fed up with Democrats. Take a look at this. The Daily Caller says, CNN's Dana Bash CNN to Adam Schiff about Portland and Kenosha. Quote, do you have any reason to believe that Russia is trying to fuel some of the civil unrest in some of these cities via social media or other methods? Now that I find absolutely amazing. It's Russia's fault. OK, they're trying to blame Trump. There are viral trends where they say, you know, Trump's riots, Trump's violence, but it's not working. Regular people are blaming their local politicians. 
You see, what these Democrats and these leftists on Twitter don't understand is that people in local areas pay attention to local news and local politics. But to them, because they're only on Twitter, they only think nationally. Regular people like where I'm at, they talk about the governor and, and, and the mayors, the local councils. They, they talk a little bit about the federal level, but for the most part, they're concerned with their own community. Why is my business closed? Well, it's the fault of this councilman, not Donald Trump. Yet you get this from CNN. Russia did it. Trump did it. I'm sorry. That says nothing to the American people, especially after years of screaming Russia and it turned out to be fake. I can only imagine this is just another part of everything backfiring because we have this video tweeted by Brendan Leslie. This is from Washington, D.C. A BLM leader is encouraging this crowd of protesters to fight the cops on the front line, saying he's ready to put them in graves. That's what you have in the streets. That's what Joe Biden supported and still supports. Let me let me make sure I can I can, I can make this clear. Joe Biden said it's time for action. He tweeted that he said the Black Lives Matter protests are good. Not realizing this is a Black Lives Matter protest. This is not the riot. These people gathering in D.C. were not going around and, and you know, attacking people and looting. The looters exist. This was the protest peacefully standing about saying it's time to put cops in graves. Then they go out and do it. So regular people see this and they say the only reason they're going out and doing it is because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris supported them and encouraged more of it. That's what the the uh, Express was pointing out with this Democracy Institute study. Joe Biden slowly starting to flip the script because he realized in his internal polling it's showing up. Don Lemon said it, and now they will reap what they have sown. Mary Claire and Anselm tweeted, I'm a suburban mom. And I will be enthusiastically and unapologetically voting for real Donald Trump in November. Law and order. Mary Claire is, uh, she works for, she works education policy and uh, analyst at the Heritage Foundation. Now, perhaps she's just a conservative and will be voting for Trump anyway. But Trump said that suburban housewives want law and order and they will support him over this. I think he's correct. And I think the polls are showing it's going to happen. I mean, we just saw the Iron Range in Minnesota, the Democrat stronghold, uh, six of their cities endorsed Donald Trump. I think we're looking at a landslide. I do. But I, w- I want to show you something else, too, in, in, in line with all of this thinking, just relating to what happened so far with all of the unrest and why I think people are fed up. Just, a, just another point. Cassandra Fairbanks, you may know her. She's a conservative reporter. She tweeted out an opinion about Kyle Rittenhouse that she thinks he did nothing wrong. Cassandra Fairbanks was suspended for this. That's right. Cal Rittenhouse has not been found guilty of any crime. He's been charged. A judge has delayed the extradition hearing from Illinois. We don't know what they will find, and there is no final determination on what Rittenhouse did. Yet they still suspended Cassandra Fairbanks. Facebook announced they will ban any and all praise or support for Kyle Rittenhouse. But what if I were to tell you that Antifa organizes every single day on Twitter and Twitter allows it? They do. Over on Google, I did something simple. I Google searched Andy No Antifa Twitter organizing, and there's a bunch of posts. Not all of them show Antifa organizing, but many of them do. You pull it up and what do you get? It is Andy No tweeting out a screenshot where they call for action. They say, be there this Saturday at noon in the area around. This is what's happening. We will be out to monitor, letting people know where to go and what to do. Here's one. Let's see if this one is uh, uh, another post. There we go. Antifa are organizing to riot in Southeast Portland again. They are meeting at Laurelhurst Park. This was a tweet. Twitter is allowing the far left extremists to organize in real time and rally people to show up. And it's resulting in people losing their lives. Cassandra Fairbanks, a reporter, tweeted an opinion that she got suspended for. Now, we, I can show you all these things, and I can say that Donald Trump is going to win. But I think the most important story is this, from the New York Post, confessions of a voter fraud, saying, quote, I was a master at fixing mail in ballots. From John Levine, a top Democratic operative says voter fraud, especially with mail-in ballots, is no myth. And he knows this because he's been doing it on a grand scale for decades. Mail-in ballots have become the latest flashpoint in the 2020 elections. While President Trump and the GOP warn of widespread manipulation of the of absentee votes that will swell with COVID. 
uh, polling restrictions, many Democrats and their media allies have dismissed such concerns as unfounded. But the political insider who spoke on the condi- condition of anonymity because he fears prosecution said fraud is more the rule than the exception. His dirty work has taken him through the weeds of municipal and federal elections in Patterson, Atlantic City, Camden, Newark, Hoboken and Hudson County. And his fingerprints can be found in local legislative, mayoral and congressional races across the Garden State. Some of the biggest names and highest office holders in New Jersey have benefited from his tricks, according to campaign records the Post reviewed. An election that is sw- uh, an election that is swayed by 500 votes, 1,000 votes. It can make a difference, the tipster said. It could be enough to flip states. The whistleblower, whose identity, rap sheet, and long history working as a consultant to various campaigns were confirmed by the Post, says he, is not on- he has not only changed ballots himself over the years, but led teams of fraudsters and mentioned at least 20 operatives in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, a critical 2020 swing state. Donald Trump offered this man complete immunity and have him come out and name names. Please get this guy on public record testifying before Congress. Please have him testify to the FBI or to whoever and and do what you have to do to make sure he can get these, weed these people out. The New York Post says they've confirmed it. Quote, there is no race in New Jersey from city council to U.S. Uh, U.S. Senate that we haven't worked on. I worked on a fire commissioner's race in Burlington County. The smaller the race, the easier it is to do. A Bernie Sanders diehard with no horse in the presidential race. He said he felt compelled to come forward in the hope that states would act now to fix the glaring security problems present in mail-in ballots. This is a real thing, he said. And there is going to be a effing war coming November 3rd over this stuff. If they knew how the sausage was made, they could fix it. Mail-in voting can be complicated, tough enough that 84,000 New Yorkers had their mailed votes thrown out in the June 23rd Democratic presidential primary for incorrectly filling them out. But for political pros, they're a piece of cake. In New Jersey, for example, it begins with a blank mail-in ballot delivered to a registered voter in a large envelope. Inside the packet is a return envelope, a certificate of mail-in voter, which the voter must sign and the, uh, and the ballot itself. That's when the election spring, uh, the, the fraud springs in action. Phony ballots. The ballot has no specific security features like a stamp or watermark. So the insider said he would just make his own ballots. I just put the ballot through the copy machine and it comes out the same way. But the return envelopes are more secure than the ballot. You could never recreate the envelope, he said. So they had to be collected from real voters. He would have his operatives fan out going house to house, convincing voters to let them mail completed ballots on their behalf as a public service. The fraudster and his minions would then take the sealed envelopes home, hold them over boiling water. You have to steam it to loosen the glue. He would then remove the real ballot, place the counterfeit ballot inside the signed certificate and reseal the envelope. Five minutes per ballot tops. The insider said he took care not to stuff the fake ballots into just a few public mailboxes, but sprinkle them around town. That way he avoided the attention that foiled a sloppy voter fraud operation in in a Patterson, New Jersey, a city council race this year, where 900 ballots were found in just three mailboxes. If they had spread them in all different mailboxes, nothing would have happened. The tipster said sometimes postal employees are in on the scam. You have a postman who is a rabid anti-Trump guy and he's working for bed, working in Bedminster or some Republican stronghold. He can take those filled out ballots and knowing 95% are going to a Republican, he can just throw those in the garbage. In some cases, mail carriers were members of his work crew and would sift ballots from the mail and hand them over to the operative. They mentioned nursing homes, voter impersonation, bribing voters. It just goes on and on and on. He says there is nothing new about these techniques. Oh, I'm sorry. Hans von uh, Spakovsky said there is nothing new about these techniques. He's a senior legal fellow at Heritage who manages the election law reform initiative. Everything he's talking about is perfectly possible. They say while federal law warns of prison sentences of up to five years, busted voter frauds have seen far less punishment. In 2018, a Texas woman was sentenced to five years. An Arizona man busted for voting twice in the mail was given just three years probation. A study by the Conservative Heritage Foundation found more than 1,000 instances of documented voter fraud in the U.S., almost off of which occurred over the last, almost all of which occurred over the last 20 years. Trump may be on track to win. He may have everything on his side, and it probably won't matter because the Democrats are forcing, for no reason, universal mail-in voting. Dr. Birx and Fauci said voting in person is safe. They don't care. We'll see how this plays out. 
but I hope you've taken the events of last night seriously. I guess we can only wait and see. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.